description. Hello everyone, it's Chris Scat here from Prestige Group Real Estate and today I'm uh, joined by the Director of 3P Accounting and Tax, Chris Borg. Chris, how are you going? I'm going well, yourself? Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good. Um, well, I thought I'd put a uh, short video together for all of our property owners. Um, Chris manages uh, a large number of their uh, tax returns on an annual basis and coming into tax season, I thought it was a uh, opportune time to get Chris uh, um, on this video, maybe to share a few tips and strategies as to what to look out for um, when doing your tax return. So Chris, um, I thought I'd hand it over to you just to see if you could share some um, some information with our, our valued clients. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I suppose there's a there's the things to be aware of from the, I suppose, the tax officer's perspective and, and what they're looking for. But at the same time, you know, trying to maximise your own position. Obviously, nobody likes paying any more tax than what they have to. Uh, but there's obviously just areas that, um, you know, with some careful consideration and planning, just to making sure that you're not in the sort of crosshairs of the tax office. Um, and I suppose it's a really important point. Um, you know, obviously, you've got a um, you know, considerable client base that do have property and, and obviously potentially their finances with you as well. Um, and one of the main focus areas for the tax office this year, and I think it's probably been there for quite a few years, is rental properties. Um, we always say with clients, anyone who does have a rental property, generally there is a little red flag uh, and not that there's anything done that's particularly wrong or anything like that or they feel they've done wrong, but the tax office over the years have found with their data matching that there, you know, that there are um, generally mistakes making as honest as they can be uh, when people do tax office. Um, the latest statistics from their latest round of compliance uh, is nine out of every 10 um, landlords that they've checked and done audits for tax returns with a rental property found that there was an error of some description. So some of the common errors and common misconceptions are claiming of interest, um, claiming repairs and maintenance when uh, when they should be capital, um, as well as the um, misconception of holiday um, homes. So a lot of you know um, families will have a holiday home. They may only rent it out for certain parts of the year um, or make it available for certain parts of the year. Or in some cases, they don't make it available at all. And that's fair enough. You know, it's a holiday home. They don't want anyone to come in and, 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 and upset it. So, you know, the conception is there is that, oh, you know, we can still claim all of the interest and all the running costs. So where it's not been made available for rent. So some of the things that um, I suppose as your clients probably need to be aware of um, is just making sure if they do have a holiday home, that they're only claiming the expenses, the running costs for the portion that they are making available for rent. And if they're not making it available for rent, just making sure uh, that they're not claiming at all for those costs. Um, Another thing in regards to interest uh, on properties, particularly with a refinance, and there'll be a lot of people now refinancing, which is which we all encourage, particularly with rates continually going up. Sometimes um, uh, owners will, will go to the bank and refinance, and they might increase their loan by 50, 100,000, maybe because they want to get that new shed at the back or get that car or or, or whatever have you. Um, and, you know, they've got some equity in the loan. Uh, one of the common mistakes that then um, uh, landlords may or taxpayers make is they'll still claim the they'll claim the interest on the full amount of the loan. So as an example, you might have a uh, you might have a situation where you initially got a loan when you first purchased the property for four hundred thousand. Um, you uh, now have principal and interest. You put that loan down to three hundred thousand. Um, you go back to the bank, get a refinance, and say I want to draw that hundred thousand um, dollars down and. Uh, you know, for like I said, those purposes before, and they go back and start claiming at four hundred thousand dollars again. So that again is not allowed. You only can uh, claim interest for the most updated balance. So if you continually pay it down, you need to do that. Right. And as I said, another thing um, to look out for is those repairs and maintenance. So um, again, making sure if it's a if it's a you're only claiming repairs and maintenance if um the uh if it is a genuine repairs and maintenance so you're just um doing work with recurring costs to get it back to the standard it was any cost that you're doing um that's improving so improving the the asset itself needs to be depreciated over a period of time so as an example you um, might have blinds um you know if you're going to get those blinds repaired you might get some fabric work on it or whatever have you that's considered a deduction that's fine 
But if you go and replace those blinds with something more in, um, more superior, uh, you might change the type of blind. They need to be depreciated over time. And so in that situation, you just need to be careful. And, and if you've you know, maybe done a renovation, it might be worth getting a depreciation report at that time. So just making sure all those is done properly. So they keep out of the crosshairs of the tax office. So um, I suppose the value of having, you know, a good tax agent is one there, um, keeping you out of the crosshairs of the tax office and making sure you're doing things right from a compliance perspective, but also we're doing the right thing from you pointing out where you could improve your tax position. Unfortunately, um, Sometimes you can't improve your tax position after 30 June for the prior year, but it's all about maybe setting yourself up for the current year. So um, some of the tips that, you know, we suggest uh, with people, as I just previously mentioned, if you're doing a significant amount of repairs of, um, of renovation, consider getting a um, consider getting a depreciation report. Um, if you're getting a loan uh, refinance and you've got a main resident loan as well, so generally, you know, you've got your home where you live, you've got a mortgage on that, and you've also... Um, got your uh, investment property, consider getting an investment only, uh, so an interest only loan. So in that way there, you're paying off your home loan quickly, whilst at the same time, maximizing your interest uh, on your investment property. So you want to be able to maintain the interest deductions on your investment property, but avoid it or lower it on your main residence because that's not a tax deduction. All right, so the importance of getting a refinance there, we always um, you know, um, point that out. Also making sure that your interest rates are, you know, keeping an eye on that because banks are looking at better deals um, all the time. And we also uh, look at, um, you know, for clients, particularly if they've got excess money, what we do say, if you do have a main residence, um, making sure you're putting that money against that loan, either by way of a redraw or an offset so the money is available. But if you can avoid putting it against your investment loan, um, if you do have a main residence loan, that's the way you're going to maximise um, your tax deduction in that way. And as a final tip, from a cash flow perspective, uh, one of the things you can consider doing um, for all those property owners is a tax variation. So generally speaking, most properties, particularly early on, properties off, off the plan off, you know, that are new are going to have considerable negative gearing because of depreciation and generally higher interest in the beginning. One of the ways you can do, rather than waiting for your tax return to be done in July and August and getting a big refund at that time, as people say, it's for savings or Christmas in July, as people call it, rather than waiting, uh, do a tax variation where it's a simple process where, you're, you know, where yourself or your tax agent can apply to the tax office by way of an online form. Um, they calculate a new taxable income based on your, ta um, on your, tax, vari on your tax variation or your gearing. And then they write to your employer and advise them to take out a lower tax um, out of your pay because you won't be needing as many tax credits with that tax um, with that gearing. That means then you're just getting more pay in your net pay in your pocket every week, fortnight or month. Put that against your home loan, um, and that's another way that you can uh, you can also get your home loan down quicker because certainly the tax office is not going to be paying you interest on any big refunds when you come to your tax return. Mm -hmm. um, so better in your pocket than, uh, than the tax office. That's how we see it. Yeah, 100%. That's a, a lot of a wealth of information there. Yeah. A question we get asked from time to time as well is that we have a lot of our owners who uh, may have an owner-occupied property that they've owned and lived in for 10 or so years, and they then want to convert it to an investment property or vice versa. They've had an investment property, want to convert it to an owner-occupied. In terms of capital gains and potential implications there, what would you recommend at that point where they might be changing it from owner occupied to investment or the other way around yeah that's a very good question and, and i suppose probably one of the red other red flags or areas of um uh, that the tax officer looking at at the moment is in regards to capital gains and, and making sure we're reporting capital gains and in particular chris in those situations where you just talked about moving from an owner well a, a main residence and then getting property that's a very common thing to do um certainly in my journey I think all the investment properties I've owned, I've, all, I've lived in it first and found that the family's outgrown it. And that's all you want to move to a different location. And I know probably a lot of people since COVID are thinking that they're sort of, you know, want to do the tree change. So they rent out their inner city property and move out. So our advice in that stage is to make sure you get a, a an appraisal of your property at that time. Um, because the way it works is, is that if your main resident, let's say you bought your property in 2010, and you live and you and you've lived in it up until 2023. The way the capital gains tax works, it doesn't start from the beginning. 
the way it works is the capital gains tax starts ticking the moment you make the property available for rent. So mm -hmm. let's, as an example, you bought a property for $350,000 back in 2010, okay? You then first make it available for rent now. Let's say the market value is $900,000 now. That will be your cost base, not the $350,000, okay? So it's very important to seek advice and by prestige or who, you know, a real estate agent that can give you an appraisal. You don't, it doesn't need to be in the form of a, of a, you know, sworn valuation, you don't need to pay, simply a, a real estate agent um, on their letterhead, giving you um, an appraisal or even an email. So later on, when you do sell um, the property in five, 10, 20 years time, you can just pull out that that letter, that email, and that's your cost base. Because the last thing you're going to want to do is when you're selling it in 10, 15 years time, your account is going okay, and you're going through the situation. What's the property worth back in 2023? And you're like, um, I'm not sure. And then you need to go to a real estate agent um, who does who never knew you back then to try and get a letter. Very, very difficult. So yeah. as soon as you do that, and I think that's really good anyway, because I think it's important to get evaluation that helps from a lending perspective and also helps you to understand your, your the value of what your rent should be. So I think it's a it's a good move regardless of the capital gains tax, but also from an uh, you know from a rent return and a loan loan situation as well. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. Well, again, um, as I say, Chris has worked with a, a lot of our clients to date. Uh, we'll be providing um, all of our owners uh, Chris's contact details. So in the event you want to ask for any further information or engage him for his services, um, uh, as, as with our current clients, we're sure that you'll be um, very impressed with his knowledge, as you would have found here, but also the service he provides. So thank you for your time, Chris. It's greatly appreciated. We look forward to chatting again sometime soon. No problems. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.